for the past year or so I've been playing with LoRa as a long-range low-power communication technology both as a personal curiosity and for my consulting business because customers have requested designs based on LoRa so I need to get myself very familiar with this technology with a constantly growing demand. Depending on where you live, the first thing that you need to worry about is whether or not you have a public gateway in your area connecting to the Things network, uh, which is a very popular choice. Otherwise, you're going to have to install one. And there is this public coverage map that you can check. Currently, there isn't any public gateway covering Constanza metropolitan area. So I knew I had to install one if I wanted to have LoRa coverage. And when I first started uh, playing with this about a year ago, my good friend Orhan donated uh, this MicroTik uh, WAP LoRa 8 gateway that he wasn't using anymore. So this model of gateway is probably one of the most popular ones for getting started with a LoRa gateway because I think it is the most affordable one and it's still pretty decent in terms of uh, performance. But as I will tell you uh, about in a future video, this uh, will be a multi-part series. You will regret getting a MicroTik gateway uh, because you will be wasting countless days trying to figure out how to configure it even if you are very tech inclined and you have plenty of networking gear config experience like I have. Uh, so if your time is valuable in any way, please consider getting a rack wireless gateway because this is what I ended up getting through a, a partnership with rack wireless. Uh, with this one, the configuration time went from days to under five minutes to get this gateway up and running and connected to the Things network. But I will tell you more about this configuration in a future episode. In this video, I will just be presenting the hardware that I plan to install on the rooftop of a tall building to get as much coverage as possible for my LoRa gateway. There will be a future video with the config and possibly a different video with testing the coverage and plotting that on a virtual map. The sponsor of this video is PCBWay.com, a professional PCB manufacturer with excellent quality and fast turnaround times. From two layers to advanced multi-layer flex rigid PCBs, PCBWay will have you covered. You could also try the new module store on their website where by using bonus points or cash you can purchase a great variety of electronic modules and related tools. Check out their website linked below. So it was probably almost a year ago at the Embedded World Conference in Nuremberg where I met with Ken Yu, the CEO of Rack Wireless, and I was telling them about the issues that I was having with, you know, getting started with LoRa and trying to configure this uh, MicroT gateway when they invited me to test their uh, Rack Wireless gear to see how that goes and if it improves my experience. And what you see here on my workbench is the Rack 7289 V2 Outdoor Gateway. And uh, this comes with several options. You can get it as an 8-channel uh, version, which I have here with only one uh, LoRa antenna, or as a 16-channel version, which gets the second antenna port. And it supports network connectivity via this um, Ethernet RJ45 jack with PoE support and they do include this uh, PoE injector inside the box if you want to use that power options. However, you also have the option to uh, power it via this uh, battery connector and they do give you the associated plug to use with that. I went with the EU868 MHz span options because I will be installing this in the EU. Another option that um, I got is the LTE modem, which I'm going to be using because it is much simpler for me to just insert and pay for a uh, cheap 4G subscription SIM, which cost me around 2 euros per month uh, with pretty much unlimited data plan. <laughs> yes, that's what you can get here in Romania. Uh, then it would be much more complicated to run a CAT6 cable up to the top of the building, which would carry its own electrical risks. So this thing is fully waterproof and uh, rated for outdoor usage. You can install it directly on a metal pole or an antenna mast uh, by using the uh, included uh, hardware with these brackets. Uh, they also include some of this um, sticky, rubbery, uh, weatherproofing tape uh, 
uh, that you can use around the n-type antenna connector because all the other connections have waterproof connectors by design but if you want to preserve the and extend the life of the n-type connectors so you might want to weatherproof them on the bottom of the uh, unit we do have these uh, three ports so uh, this is where you put in the sim card uh, there is also a usb type c uh, port in here uh, there is an SD card which already um, contains a card that's needed by the system so no messing around with that one uh, here we have the RG45 port which I'm not going to use so a uh, weatherproofing cap will go over that and there is the uh, third port which in my case is uh, unused on on this uh, version of the gateway this is the uh, battery connector uh, which also has an extra two pins for a Modbus uh, interface because they do offer this uh, smart battery solar kit that uh, can talk to the gateway when installed. The enclosure is uh, really nicely made, uh, looks like uh, die cast and like I said it's fully rated for outdoor usage uh, but because I will be installing some additional components like a solar panel, battery and MPPT charger which are not rated for outdoor usage I'm going to be using a plastic IP65 electrical box to house everything including the gateway uh, but before I show you that electrical box let me um, present a few of the other accessories that I will be using for this installment they also sent me three different antennas uh, these are outdoor rated antennas high quality rock wireless branded unfortunately my tiny VNA is damaged and I can't measure these right now but I'll get a new VNA in a few weeks and we can do some measurements in a future video I will probably end up installing the biggest one I have which I think it's 8 uh, dBi but there are some things to consider for example by using the highest gain antenna I will lose some of the uh, nearby vertical coverage as shown in this uh, diagram taken from their website I also need some uh, n-type LMR 400 antenna cable and I have a couple of uh, different lengths here uh, if you install a gateway closest to the antenna preferably the antenna is plugged in directly into the gateway it's even better because you will avoid longer cable attenuation uh, in my case I do need about a 5 meter long cable there's nothing I can do about that except for using a high quality cable with minimal losses optionally I got this uh, lightning arrestor which is supposed to go in line with the antenna feed and you're supposed to hook this up to uh, mains earth by using this uh, hookup cable to provide a safe discharge path for you know various electrostatic charges that uh, might build up however I do not think I will have access to an earth point on the rooftop so I don't think I can install this uh, recommended uh, protection device now like I said you have the option of choosing their outdoor rated uh, high quality smart battery pack kit which talks to the gateway directly comes with a solar panel and it will likely support such a gateway running on battery for more than one week however that comes with a price tag of roughly $800 I think uh, many users would consider either using a PoE or a DIY solution for solar kit so I opted for the DIY solar kit solution because I can get that done for much less and I'll include a bomb with the total cost of the DIY solution uh, in a few minutes just so you can get an idea of uh, how much it ended up costing me I opted for this uh, sealed lead acid battery uh, which is a 12 volts 15 amp rated one and this is supposed to be a model that handles uh, deep cycling better um, I opted for lead acid instead of lithium because it works better in uh, low temperatures which will get over the winter on the rooftop I'm not sure it will go below zero inside the electrical box but we'll see I opted for a 15 amps uh, rating because I measured the power consumption of the gateway and I got approximately 2.37 watt hours with LTE active and, and for this particular particular uh, battery the watt hour rating should be approximately 174 watt hours so I will be getting 73.4 hours or three days of continuous running of this uh, battery uh, where I live there is no chance for a complete uh, sun blackout for three continuous days 
Then I went with this uh, generic uh, solar panel, uh, 30 watt mono crystalline solar panel. It's a very cheap model that I could find locally. And I did a live test with this solar panel on a clear sunny day. I angled the panel at roughly 45 degrees and uh, I was able to charge uh, close to 8 amp hours or that would uh, translate to approximately 107 watt hours in 6.5 hours. And this gave me confidence that uh, with just a couple of average sunny hours, I could get enough charge uh, to keep this going uh, indefinitely. And there are, of course, a bunch of other factors to consider here, like battery capacity will vary with temperature. Uh, it will vary with discharge rate, although we're using it at a very slow discharge rate. And then there are the effects of uh, depth of charge. Uh, but generally speaking, I think we are in a very good confident ballpark with the ratings that I chose for this project. So now given the uh, battery and solar panel choices, uh, I wanted a small, uh, reliable but cheap MPPT charger and uh, there is none that fits the bill better than uh, this Victron Energy Blue Solar Charge Controller. This is the bottom of the range in their offer being capable of uh, 10 amps maximum charging current, supports up to 290 watts solar panel power with up to 75 volts of open circuit voltage. This bottom of the range model does not have the Bluetooth connection, but it does have a uh, serial port that you can use for configuring the uh, de device and seeing stats. And I have already done this with just a basic volt link USB to serial adapter. Maybe I'll do a video uh, on that later on. Now I purchased this uh, new and it was around $100, but you can uh, commonly find these for half that price on the uh, second-hand market. For connecting the solar panel to the MPPT charger, I got this uh, high-quality, very flexible, outdoor-rated Titan X 3x 1.5mm cable. I got a 5-meter length of this. And um, for installing the antenna and solar panel, I need an antenna mast or a pole, and I got this uh, specially uh, zinc treated one. It's about 1.2 meters long, 30 millimeters in diameter, complete with a 90 degree mounting base as well as a bunch of uh, mounting accessories that I might need with this uh, project. To keep everything waterproof I ordered the cheapest IP65 plastic electrical box that I could find. This is a 400 by 600 by 200 millimeter size. It's a pretty basic box. It has a metal panel inside a rubber gasket and I think it will do the job if it's not directly exposed to the elements 24-7. Uh, this costed me approximately 42 US dollars shipped and uh, it's going to be installed under a building ledge so it won't get much direct sunlight or water uh, which gives me confidence that it will survive just fine. And here's how everything uh, looks uh, when it's positioned inside the box. I've also added uh, this limit switch to detect if the door is opened. But to summarize the uh, DIY battery solar pack uh, bill of material cost, here it is on screen. It was roughly $209 total, which is of course much less than the smart battery pack from Rap Wireless. But I would say probably not as reliable um, and only an option for those that are okay with putting in the elbow grease to get everything together. You're also not getting any stats from the battery pack because like I previously mentioned with the smart battery kit from Rack Wireless, it communicates directly to the gateway um, and uh, you can see the battery stats. There may be smaller additional bits of hardware and accessories like small connectors and silicon wires that are used uh, in this project, but nothing worth mentioning here. Uh, next video will be with the actual install on the rooftop and the little bit of config that's needed to get this up and running. The software on this is amazing. And I would also be interested in hearing in the comments below if you ever installed a LoRa gateway, if you're running it as a public node or not, what type of hardware did you use, and if you agree with me that configuring a MicroTik gateway is a nightmare. For me, discovering this uh, Rack Wireless Gateway and how nice their software is, it was eye-opening. It's like comparing Ubiquiti networking gear, which we all know is very nice and easy to set up with some other cheap brands. That was all for today. Thank you for joining me in this video 
and I will be seeing you next week.